Hey, what's up? It's Pure for Life here, and welcome to another exciting Kate PHP tutorial. Today, we're going to be looking at how to create static pages within Kate PHP, and I'm going to go also into how to uh, add extra CSS and extra JS inside your layouts file or inside the actual view file that you're working on. And this is a request from a user called Enho Nguyen Tan. Uh, I'm not too sure how you uh, pronounce that. So he's asking me, can you show me how to create a new page, not the home page, include CSS file and JS. So that's what I'm going to try explain to you today. So there's actually quite a lot to this. If you're used to just coding HTML, you might get a little bit um, confused as this is all PHP based. Um, but follow along and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, and yeah, so here's a tutorial. But first, uh, you'll be noticed wearing some very nice sunglasses here. Uh, but I'm also wearing a fleece because it's uh, it's really cold as well, which is surprising because I'm actually in Australia at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm in Melbourne. It's uh, pretty good, pretty good. And uh, But it's really cold. It's really cold. It's the winter at the moment. So... But this is definitely not my favourite item of clothing. Um, hopefully I will get some more <laughs> clothes uh, soon. <laughs> and let's get on with the tutorial. So I'll take these glasses off because I don't need them. Um, or maybe my screen's too bright. Um, let's, let's get into this. So I'm using Espresso, if you'd like to know. It's a pretty cool app um, editing on. And we're going to be focusing on the roots file, the pages controller, and the layout. And we're going to be creating a few new pages, obviously new pages being static pages. So what we want to do to begin with is go to your roots file, which is inside app config. And you'll see this file called roots here. And with here, you've got all your connections to your different pages. Um, so we're going to be creating new pages today. And if you notice, this root here connects our pages to a specific action called display inside the pages controller. Uh, what we want to do is comment this out for now. This is how I create static pages anyway. I'm not too sure this is uh, the best way, but this is how I create them. So we want to comment out this root, uh, root connect here and then go ahead to your pages controller and within here you can specify new functions now to basically make static pages. So once you create a, a public function, let's say display, then you can use that display as the action and create the view for it. So we're going to create um, a new view and a new action called energy drinks. So this is basically the name of your page. So create a new function um, and then we're good to go. I'm going to go into how you change a layout and also like you can set variables in here if you want um, but we won't worry about that for now. Let's go ahead and create a new view inside our view pages because it's using the pages controller um, and we'll call it energy drinks. .ctp Then in here we just create test energy drinks. So what we want to do is click on we want to type in pages slash energy drinks, and then that will bring us the energy drinks page up that we just created. Um, I hope you're still with me on this one. Um, if you're not too sure about how KPHP works, check out understanding uh, model view controller applications. So we've created this new page. Um, we could type extra stuff, add HTML, um, all that stuff. Uh, now you notice though that it's brought out this layout here uh, with the KPHP at the top and uh, the logo down here. What this is is a layout, um, and layouts are inside your view layouts folder. And it, and for default, it's set to default um, the default layout here. And this is basically where your HTML structure and also like your head elements like CSS and HTML are kept. Uh, to change this layout, if we go back to the pages controller, we can just set this layout, lowercase layout, equals and then Ajax for instance, because I know one, that one exists. 
and then we go back to page, it should appear as a blank page because of um, Ajax doesn't have any CSS or anything in, included in it. So we don't want that, we want to keep it as default for now and save that so it will come back. Um, we go back to default layout and now we can have a look at the structure of uh, adding CSS and adding script. So you'll notice inside the head here we have uh, these PHP tags and within these PHP tags here um, we have this fetch meta CSS and script. So this is where your script and CSS will be echoed out and you can basically send extra CSS or extra script files from your view page directly. Um, for instance, I've got this test energy drinks page and I want to add a new JavaScript file to um, to the page. So echo this HTML script, name of the script which is test and then array inline false and once that's set now you'll notice at the moment that inside the head we don't have a link to a any JavaScript files if we refresh the page we will now appear in the head hopefully so we look in the head and there it is the script file and that's because the fetches are being done on the default layout here so that's how you would add an extra script. Um, some of the cool things like, for instance, if you wanted to add extra CSS um, files in a one array, uh, we can array this and then add in extra CSS. Uh, so that would create the two files now, it would link to two files. And also you could do the same with script um, here. Though I could create a new script here, echo this HTML script. Um, uh, and that's basically how you would, that's a few ways of how you can put CSS and JS into your application. Obviously you could create new layouts and then just include them inside uh, your function. And the same goes for the script as goes for the CSS. If we add this extra array inline equals false, it will appear inside the head. Otherwise, for instance, if we, to, was, if we were to just echo this HTML script out, it would appear inside the content, I believe. So inside here, it would appear here, which is not good. And that's a quick overview of how to create static pages. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, like I said at the beginning, please ask. Um, and yeah, happy coding.